In this video, let's implement the middleware to verify the JSON web token. A middleware is nothing but a function that gets executed before the user defined handler is executed. So let's create a verify token middleware in the backend. Open the file api.js and over here, let's create a new function verify token. The function has access to the request, response, and next. Within the function, the first check we make is whether the authorization key is present as part of the header. So if not of request.headers.authorization, which means to say if it is not present, we return a 401 status with the message that the request is unauthorized. So res.status of 401.send unauthorized request. Next, if the authorization property is present, let's extract the token value from the bearer token. So let token is equal to request.headers.authorization dot split on a space and then we are going to extract only the first index so what is happening here is we split on the space which results into an array with the string bearer in the zeroth index and the actual token in the first index so the token variable is going to contain the actual token value now it might so happen that the token is not present. So we check if it's not a null string, not an object, it will be a string. If token is null, we send the response that it is again unauthorized. If the token is in fact present, we verify the token using the JSON web token package. So let payload is equal to jot dot verify we pass in the token and then the secret key. This is the string secret key. The verify method returns the decoded token only if it is valid. So if the token is invalid, it implies that there is no payload, in which case we again return a 401 status. So if there is no payload, return status of 401 unauthorized request. However, if all the conditions pass, we assign the payload subject as the request user ID and then pass on the execution to the next handler. So request.userID is equal to payload.subject and then we call next. All right, that's pretty much our middleware. Let's add it to the special events route. So in router.get special events, The second argument is going to be the middleware, verify token. So what happens is that when we make a request to the special events route, first the token is verified and only then the code in this particular API gets executed. So if a user tries to send an invalid token, the API code does not even get executed. The middleware responds on its own with a 401 status. All right, now that the middleware is done, let's head back to the front end and handle the 401 status code. So open special events.ts and instead of logging to the console the error, let's handle it better. If error is an instance of HTTP error response and if error.status is equal to 401, which is sent from the server, we are going to redirect to the login route, for which we need Angular's router. So first import it, and then inject it. And just to quickly point it out, HTTP error response was automatically imported. All right, now we are going to redirect to this.router.navigate link parameters array, the login route. So if the verification failed in the backend, the front end will navigate to the login component instead of special events component. 
Let's save this and test it out in the browser. So make sure to restart your node server. Node server. Before going to the browser, I'm gonna open routing module. And over here, I'm going to comment out the can activate guard for now. This way, we can make sure that we are verifying the token in the backend and the auth guard is not preventing sending the request to special events. Now in the browser, go to the application panel and over here, you can see that we don't have any token that is set. Now, if I try to navigate to the members route, we get redirected back to login. If you check the console, you should have a 401 unauthorized error. So our verified token middleware is checking to see if a token is present. If it is not present, it is returning a 401 status. If I do log in though, so let's go with a at a.com and then the password of a and login. We should now have the token set and now we should be able to navigate to the members route. There you go. All right, let me enable the authentication guard again and we should be good. Our authentication is now complete. We have an auth guard to check for the token in the front end and we have a verified token middleware in the back end to check if the token is valid or not. All right, here is an exercise for you all. Try changing the value of the token to an invalid token and submit the request. You should get a JOT malformed exception with a 500 status. So try to replicate the scenario and how to handle that exception. In the next video, let's finish the application with some UI logic for a logout button.